Well, good morning and welcome to the service for St Nicholas Church on Sunday the 10th of May. Um, we'll be following the usual format that we've been, uh, we've, we're becoming a little bit familiar with during lockdown. And as we begin, can I say thank you to everyone who's continuing to support the food bank. Uh, please do uh, carry on uh, doing that. Uh, it's good to be able to uh, help others um, during this time. And um, thanks to everyone also who's contributed to, uh, to everything that we are able to put out on a Sunday morning. So a moment of quiet and uh, then we'll begin with the prayers of uh, the prayer that we're using during this time and then continue with the prayer of penitence. So we pray, loving God, source of healing and comfort, fill us with your grace that the sick may be made whole, those who care for others strengthened, the anxious calmed and the vulnerable protect us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct that we shall what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help, we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Bible reading uh, today is John chapter 14, and we're reading verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I had uh, hoped to visit my mother back in March and uh, about the time, uh, that was yeah, around about the time of her birthday, so mid-March. And uh, it was actually, well it used to be anyway, actually very easy to go and see her. A bus to Woolwich, uh, the DLR to City Airport and then a short flight to Belfast. Uh, I had booked well in advance to get the best fare and I'm a bit choosy about where I sit. So again, um, early booking allowed me the best choice of seats. And in the back of my mind, I, I did have a, a thought, mm, 
I wonder, there was just a little doubt. But I decided it would be okay because, you know, I chose my route knowing my destination. Well, the thing was, or at least the thing turned out, was that I booked my flight with Fly B. And shortly before I was due to fly, they collapsed as an airline. We were all disappointed and that uh, sort of niggle of doubt uh, proved to be right. So I started looking for an alternative. There were various offers open to Fly B customers with other airlines. And even as I did that, the country was beginning to close down due to the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, and that in itself had contributed to the collapse of Fly B. It seemed more and more likely that we're heading for some sort of lockdown, public transport was to be avoided, and the time came we realised um, uh, realised here and, and in Northern Ireland that all forms of travel were out and I was not going to get there. See, normally we know our destination and knowing that, uh, we then decide what route to travel. Uh, we choose the means by which we will get there. I mean, we complain about travel, of course. I think we probably complain quite a lot, but we are spoiled for choice. We can walk, we can cycle, and we can take the bus, we can go by car, uh, we can take a ship, we can go by train, or we can fly. All of these means of transport are available to us. But in the grand scheme of things, they're all quite new. Most people used to just walk, or if you were in a hurry and had the money and the stomach, you went by a sailing ship. So even in that much simpler world, Thomas's question was quite legitimate. He said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? It's fair enough. Once you know the destination, you decide how to get there. If you don't know the desti destination, then the route and the means for getting there remains a mystery. Our Bible reading it opens with Jesus giving his disciples words of reassurance at a time when they were concerned. And the concern came from Jesus talking about leaving them. And in these verses, there are lots of toing and froing to around the mysterious destination, which Jesus simply calls his father's house. And Jesus, he goes light on the detail of that destination. All he says is that there's, there's plenty of room there, room enough for each of them. Uh, he says that he, Jesus, will be there and that he'll leave and come back to take them there. So Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. But those words of reassurance, it could have seemed like something of a puzzle to his disciples because he concludes, you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas is likely expressing the question which is in everyone's mind. You know, we, we don't know where you're going. We don't know that place you're talking about. So because we don't know the destination, we cannot possibly be expected to know the way. Fair enough? Well, probably yes. So why are those words of Jesus words of comfort and words of reassurance? Well, the comfort and reassurance come because they are the words of Jesus, because they are said by him. At this stage in the story, the disciples knew Jesus fairly well. They trusted him. Uh, they knew they wanted to be with him. And uh, that had been brought home to them by talk of him leaving them. Surely it was unthinkable that he should leave now. So certainly a bit of explanation was required. Uh, Jesus was going to leave, but only so that he could re get ready for them to join him. Because what really mattered was that they would, in the end, be together. They wanted more than anything to be with Jesus. So he was saying, yes, you will be with me in my father's house. And that's all you need to know about the des destination. You will be where I will be. Now, the really important matter for now is not the destination. That is all sorted. The really important thing is knowing how to get there. And said, so Jesus, you already know how to get there. You already know the way. Then as an explanation to that, Jesus says, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what is Jesus getting at here? Now at the risk of generalising, we might look at matters of faith and religion from a couple of, uh, you know, just a, a couple of ways. Um, so maybe some of us, some of us are doers. Uh, religion is something that you do. You go to certain places at certain times, you do certain things. Uh, rituals are carried out, tasks are completed. 
uh, in some settings, and we in the Church of England are prone to this, a series of religious observance, uh, or a sense rather, a sense of religious observance is emphasised. Uh, we even go so far at times as saying that, you know, to be a Christian is about what you do, is about observance. Well, if some of us are doers, other of us, others of us might see ourselves as thinkers. It's all about the right set of beliefs. It's about getting correct thoughts and ideas into your head. Read the right books, that sort of thing. Be thought through. Now, we could go on um, subdividing and coming up with the cate other categories, how we express, you know, um, faith ourselves. And, you know, in and of uh, in and of themselves, religious practice and well thought out beliefs are good. The New Testament tells us about such things and makes us consider practice and thought. We should be interested in these. But when gathered with his disciples who were troubled and feeling uncertain about the future, the answer that Jesus gave to their worried hearts was not in terms of what they had to do to ease their minds or what they had to think. It was in terms of who they had to know. Assurance for today and for the future comes from a person and we receive it through love. It's when love is offered and received that we truly get to know someone. And it's only in the context of love that we can feel safe and secure. To quote another part of the New Testament, the letters of John, perfect love drives out fear. God has shown us that he loves us through the person of his son, Jesus. Reassurance comes from being in the love of God. The way to God is not through actions or thoughts or even words. It is through Jesus. We come to the Father through him. He is the way. The way is a person who we can all know. A person who loves us completely and perfectly. Jesus Christ is that way. You know, for Thomas and the other disciples, the way to God was standing right in front of them. And it's a reminder that we do not have to search around for the way to God. You know, we've not been given a puzzle to solve. The way has come to us. The way starts where we are, for he has come to be with us, to be with you. So Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. The way to God is personal. Truth is also personal. You know, we might think of the truth as a set of cold, hard facts, information that reflects reality, that can be relied upon and can be examined. And there are uh, such things, there is such information. But you know, in, in our time, truth has been downgraded, it's been made relative and therefore essentially it's something that's kind of unknowable. Truth can, though, be reclaimed and recovered when we see it as Jesus described it to his disciples. Truth is personal. If God is the living God, the eternal, unchanging God, creator and sustainer of the universe, then he is the ultimate truth. Truth is no longer a set of hard facts or even something that is beyond us, something that is unknowable. Truth has come to us because God has come to us. Truth is perfectly expressed in the one who is both divine and human. Once again, that is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. We've only just celebrated Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, and this is a Sunday. It is the day he rose from the dead. We mark uh, his new life every Sunday. Jesus rose with resurrection life, new life, life that is indestructible. It is that new eternal life that he offers to us, that he now shares with us. So there was Jesus, speaking to a group of rather anxious people, people who are worried about the future, worried about what they knew or did not know, and reassurance was found not in answering all their questions or responding to all their concerns. Reassurance was found instead in knowing Jesus Christ by finding in him the way, the truth and the life. Reassurance was not 
in knowing the destination. It was in knowing how to get there. Getting there was and still is through Jesus Christ, who is the way. You know, we live at the moment with so many unknowns. The future, as they say, is not what it used to be. But we need not be troubled. We need not be anxious. All we need to know is that Jesus Christ is the way to the Father. He is with us and we travel in his company. We need not be afraid. A moment of quiet before we continue with the creed. So we say the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, let's turn to God now in prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Justin, our Archbishop, and Christopher, our, uh, our Diocesan Bishop, and Caraway, our Area Bishop, and all your Church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for your Church, uh, that even during this time of restriction, this time of lockdown, it might bear witness uh, to the love of Christ and that he is the way, the truth and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this in every nation the ways of justice and of peace that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Heavenly Father, we do continue to pray for the Prime Minister and Government, we ask that uh, their advisers would speak truth to them, that they might be able to think and act wisely and make the best decisions uh, for this nation and also uh, thinking of beyond our borders to the rest of the world. Heavenly Father, we pray uh, that those in positions of responsibility uh, would be given the wisdom and the support that they need to lead their nations through this time of uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for um, uh, for those who are continue to work, those who are key workers, those who are working in the NHS, uh, and those who uh, carry on uh, keeping uh, the nation uh, moving in one way or another, uh, at uh, sometimes at considerable risk to themselves. Heavenly Father, pray that you protect uh, key workers and uh, that they might bring uh, life uh, and uh, safety. Uh, to many through their service. Heavenly Father, we pray too that you would help us uh, as neighbours uh, to support one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And we continue to pray for Pam, for Juanita, for George and for Caraway. And in a moment of quiet, we add our prayers for those known to us and for whom we have a particular concern. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, and according to your promises grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And Father, we think of uh, Tara and her family as they prepare for uh, the funeral of Jean. We pray too for Sue and her family as they prepare to say goodbye to Mary. Father, we pray for Robert and Richard as they mourn the death of their mother and make their preparations for her funeral. And we pray too for Robin, for Emily and Charlotte as they uh, live with the, the loss of Carolyn, their uh, mother uh, and wife, and ask that you be the God of all comfort to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.